All right, welcome back from break. So we're going to try to do escalation again today. We failed on Wednesday, um, which is good because we had a lot of good questions. We got into good discussion. But first, so I've been grading your midterms, um, and people are doing generally well at most of the questions except for this one, which I thought might be the case, and it was. This is the most fun question. So what I want you to do is break into groups and talk about what the answer is and why, and we'll talk about it as a, as a class. Okay. Maybe you can convince me that like, your answer actually deserves points or something. Right, so. Yeah? When will you be finished grading them? I'm not sure. I was hoping for today, but I was not. Yeah. Soon. Soon. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> 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 um, For your entire lifetime, right? Okay. Because I wrote two answers based on if they could be one amount or okay, yeah, that's yeah. just once. We've got all three possibilities right here. Wait, what's yeah. it didn't change? Did it change? Yeah, it would either I would still didn't change or would decrease. That's what I can Not necessarily. I think we decreased. If we reason it really good, do we get partial credit? Uh, if, if, well, if your reason is good, the answer must be correct, right? <laughs> if it sounds really good. <laughs> Plus all the viewers on YouTube. Yeah, that's yeah, so really Also, why we blame your partner. We were thinking that. Rather than I was thinking that. All right, one minute. All right, let's start. So, what's the answer? Why? And maybe you can argue, like maybe I wrote this ambiguously, right? Maybe there's some sort of like, oh, I can see it that way, okay. And the question's like that, so. Go for it. There's a no right, no right answer. Is it great? Yeah. Okay, I'll put decrease. 
because you have this trait, and at least some portion of the time, it causes those with that trait to be removed from the gene pool, like in the mountain. Mm -hmm. So you would think that over time, that would just kind of get weaned down. Where if you don't have the trait, all of you from the different you produce, but if you do have the trait, you're not enough time of those fathers. Will agree with that, different reasoning. Yeah. Black lives in the mountains so you can do this, right? But not between mountain and valley. There's no gene flow from valley back to mountain. Right. So yeah. if producing the cell isn't possible, what? Why, why are they beneficial? Uh, because if you're giving your children the chance to serve. Okay. Yeah. 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 It is better, right? Yeah. The question is, but how do the genes, how, 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 does that, how does that benefit get reflected in selection on the mountain? Yeah. I thought that the genes that are associated with So about the so yes I mean if they're if they're population they probably have the pure real type other other thoughts yeah. 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 so what does dominant mean. Big A is dominant, right? Then this is phenotype one, this is phenotype one, this is phenotype zero, right? Okay. Um, <coughs> let's just do Hardy Weinberg. So they have no change in all, all, all these traits are equal fitness, right? Um, what's the frequency of the dominant allele next generation? Each of, these, each of these produces ten offspring, and they all resort. So it produces ten gametes, and they resort. What's the frequency of big A next generation? What's the frequency of big A now? Nope. Capital A. What's the frequency in all these, in all three? And if the population where, you know, 33% this, 33% this, 33% this, for some reason. What's the frequency of the gap? Okay. Yeah. What's the frequency of the gap? Let's divide it into gametes, right? So, what are the gametes being produced by this? We have A and A. This one we have A and A. This one we have A and A. One half, exactly. So, the frequency of big A is one half. Okay. This little is one half. All right. So now we have reproduction with, with abandon, just everything mixing with everything else, right? What's the previous next generation? Same, right? So a chance I pick, okay, this one and this one, and a chance this one and this one, a chance this one and this one, right? So we expect to have, again, you know. 33% this, 33% this, 33% this. Right? So the dominance doesn't affect um, <coughs> the frequency. 
right? What does affect is the frequency of the trait, right? So here, two thirds of them is phenotype one, and only one third of them is phenotype zero. And here, same thing. I have two thirds of phenotype one, one third zero. Right? But the but the allele frequency doesn't change. So, it doesn't, so dominance doesn't affect <coughs> allele frequency. But that's the, the phenotype frequency. Right? Um, and that also wouldn't change. Right? So we go from two thirds, two thirds, one. It still doesn't change. Right? So dominance isn't, isn't relevant here so much. Other than the fact that you know when this allele is present, it's, it's effect is observed. Right? Whether you're you know two two balloon parents or one balloon parent. So if you have a pass on the, the, the balloon gene, the balloon allele. Okay. <coughs> and of course, since biology is always like weird exceptions, some they go through is called mathematic uh, drive, where you know if you have one parent who's heterozygous, you might have big A being six percent, little A. Forty percent, because somehow um, the big A alleles become more common in the gametes, and somehow they, they win during meiosis. And so, it's not clear. So it's actually a very rich how this happens, right? But that could happen the other way too. It's not about dominance. It's just something about weird non segregation. Yeah. Is that like the same thing in Fisher's principle, like a disposition towards like giving one sex chromosome? Um, well, right, so you could have that same thing happening, right? So instead of A, big A, little A, you could have X, X and Y. And you could have some trait that makes you more apt to pass on X or more apt to pass on Y. But if you have that, over time, still the optimum is still close back to 50%. Even if you have variation from 90 to 10. Yeah. Okay. But that's a rare case. In most cases, it's just, <coughs> you know, your producing population doesn't change. Okay. So back to the midterm question. The view is that you know, it'd be great for the woes in the mountain to do to have more ballooning alleles because then the, they're often a better chance of getting to a nice area. Right? And the idea that well ballooning takes you out of the population, so that frequency of the population goes down. What do people think? Those that have the allele. Right. So would it really affect the allele frequency? Uh, people think. Yeah, people think about that. Yeah, so selection in the nature is often much smaller than that. We still have people changes. Right? So Hamilton actually is a pretty good definite good. And actually we can work out where it would be over multiple generations. Okay, so <coughs> let's say start out with um, you know, 10%. B for ballooning, other fits B. Little B, not the little. What I expect my gene type frequency to be. Uh, we second to think of, yeah. I mean, this 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 should this should you have jet this down cold. Actually, useful. Right. 
So this will be the this will be. So then what happens next generation? Maybe the old baby spider is born. So what happens? With a 50% answer, so 50% of the population is given to the children. But how does that mean? It's a problem, right? So then, these and these both have the phenotype of the lineage. Right. right. So, if we can do decimal math easier. Okay. So, 10% of these go away. So, initial number is 10%. Okay. What did you go? Yes. How about here? So, I have 0.5. Do I lose? 0.05. Do I left? How about these? 0.25 minus what? Zero. <coughs> so what does this mean? So, if someone, so let's, let's get these proportions. Can someone add this up and divide to the proportion? Alright, so it's going to 2255 over 2255 plus 0.45 plus 0.25. Okay. Alright, this one? Four and six. Please. Okay. Next one? Okay. So we've gone from 0.25 to 0.243. Right? So even with 10%, that's a bit of a hit. Right? 0.5, to 0.486, to 0.27. Right, and so we see, through time, the frequency of the gluting allele decreases. Right, we, like we said, we were losing those individuals off the mountain. Okay. Now, loss of homozygous matters more than loss of heterozygous. You're losing two alleles, you're losing just one. Okay. Um, <coughs> but still, overall, the frequency of the homozygous that don't balloon is going up. Yeah. If you would have said that it's dominant without a pattern. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, it would make it so that there's less selection on it when it's rare. Right? So if you're very, very rare in the population, you know, most people do 1%, possibly being homozygous or low. Right? And so the efficacy of selection that we can get out is less because most of the time you're, you're, you're invisible selection. Right? Or that might change you up to heterozygous mating. Right, so, so it slows down at the end, the rate of loss, so it would affect that, but it doesn't affect the overall end outcome. Okay. 
Okay. So what about the idea that, you know, if you have bots from the land in this lowlands, they do really well. That's true. They do do really well. Right? So why isn't that signal important here? There's no gene flow. Right. You can't come back. Right? So, you know, these, you know, these that balloon off, they do great. Right? But to the population, they're dead to them. Right? They don't come back. Um, <coughs> but there's no way to know you know, for a selection to act upon that variation, right? Um, <coughs> we think of the Irish going to America, right? They could have all died immediately, they could have all prospered immediately, right? There's no way to tell in Ireland how they're doing, there's no way to select them to go to travel, right? It's on issues in Ireland. Um, <coughs> same thing here. Right? So, such an act, such an act is on all knowing and tries to increase fitness. It acts on you know those that win in that population do better on the last one. Even if by doing something else, you could you know do better overall. Okay. And spiders, you know, looking at frequency of this trait among spiders on the mountains and the valley, the mean probably increases. Um, but we're just talking about the mountain here. There's no way to get team for that. Any questions about that? I think has issues with this question. I think it shows that the dominance thing is an issue and the whole section of reference is an issue. It's good to put up that. That's why we have tests, right? So, you know, what you're saying is that. It's not just like an interview. Other questions? Okay, it's clear. Anyone want to argue for an answer being right? All right, one other thing on the programming note. So we have a paper due November 3rd. It's still a ways off, so it's not November 2nd, we haven't started yet. Um, <coughs> it's uh, 100 points, it's a topic review, um, 1,000 words. So cover some macro macroevolutionary question. And it's probably going to have it pretty narrow, but you don't have to have it pretty narrow. But you know, some particular question, um, what maintains sex ratio? Um, what happened to dinosaurs? Those, those sort of questions, right? Um, <coughs> and tell me what's known about it, right? Um, what to work on it right now, what work I can do in the future. Okay? Because science is an ongoing, ongoing endeavor, right? It's not just a series of facts that we accumulate. So what we're going to do is figure out, okay, so this is what we know, but what are people doing to figure out how they can know more? Okay? Um, here, you, need, you, you do need to cite properly. So, Mitchell, you didn't have to. Right? Here, cite properly. I don't care what style you use for citation. Um, you can use the one like science has with numbers, or you can use, you know, Smith, two and five, and appendices. Um, <coughs> I don't care if titles are italicized or bold or whatever. I would just pick a style and, and do it. Do number third. Right? And work should be individual. Okay. Later is a group assignment. I'll assign groups for you. Um, but this one is work on your own. And of course, later is an detection and all that. Any questions about this assignment? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. There's already a safe assigned slot for this. Yeah. And of course, if you upload it to the practice and upload it again, it will match completely. Because if you haven't played drives, you don't need to worry. If you, worry. If you have played drives, you can see that. Other questions about this? Okay, so escalation. All right, so it was an idea developed by Gerard Vermey, a paleontologist, <coughs> thinking about how life has changed since another kind of trend we see in life. All right, so I guess I'll just walk through his argument for what escalation is. Okay. What I'm going to try to do is think of counterexamples. What the scientists do. It's okay. You know, I think there's this general pattern. You say, well, you know, in lemurs on Madagascar, there's like one one of the size of a gorilla. It doesn't match your pattern. Okay. That's good to bring up. Okay. Um, something that would invalidate this completely, right? But you have enough of them, it just seems wrong. Or it's not explaining something. Maybe it works not for herbivores, something like that. Try to think about counterexamples. 
So, <coughs> take a first idea. Most resources need to be living things. There are other, other organisms that are under the control of organisms, shelters. Right? Um, so, basically, you have to compete with other organisms of some sort. Right? And this could be, you know, lions and hyenas fighting over carcass. But it could also be seedlings fighting over a light gap in forest. So there's always this competition. Any questions about that? Any counterexamples to that? Right, so the first thing to colonize an island are competing. The first thing to colonize is a new lava flow. Good. Yeah? When you use the word phrase, preventing others from obtaining, you might think something like blood nurturing and that's. It's like you're not only you're not preventing them, you're actually giving them some of those resources. Right. So it's like all about choosing. So vampire bats are these wonderful, cuddly, sharing organisms. Right. So first of all, there are these bats that um, they, they, they suck blood from cows, and they, they lick blood from cows, and things like that. And they fly, they land, and they run towards them silently on the ground, and crawl up and then bite their legs and, and bite their blood. Um, <coughs> it's not like flying and getting pet, it's a stealthy bitch. Um, but, you know, getting blood meals is not easy to do. Right? You have luck to find the, the cows or other animals you're eating. <coughs> and so a lot of times they strike out. And there's small little bundles of, you know, energy burning things, right? Flying around. And so if you don't get meals, you know, every couple days, you die. What they do is they share meals with each other. Um, and they sort of keep track of who's being nice and sharing. And there's ways of social policing this. Right? But you're right, that's something where <coughs> they are, you know, working together. Right? So there's altruism in general by like this. I don't know what? Our examples, though, where there's altruism, where there's always oh, the, the, the altruistic behavior, but then Hamilton's role really we talked about, right? It's probably they're acting to maximize their own benefit. Um, but yeah, that's it is something where you know we don't see them easily, we don't see them competing so much. Now, there could be a competition for like roosting space or something like that. Um, so, you know, so you need to compete on all axes for this. I mean, some axes are not. The difference is, I mean, so like the new island thing, that is. Case where it does violence in the deal. If like it's a new resource, it's just there. Um, can we ignore that or no? What are the arguments going in? It seems like on an evolutionary time scale, like the period in which they would not be competing is not simple. Like they would go in with a diverse product, which is satisfying. You don't think about things like you know, R versus K species, for example. 
we had something that, you know, for a small island, we have two individuals land, and one breeds fast and cheap, and one creates some beautiful well designed offspring. Right? Well, then it creates fast and cheap, and do better, and spread off. And so you can imagine if you have an aftermath extinction, same thing happening where those that can spread more quickly, you know, do better. So after the KT extinction, we're going to put the fern spike. So the ferns everywhere, and start to die back off. And it'll be something like that where you have all these kind of, the environments that the ferns can go over. Uh, that is an active research question, but something we don't know yet. How important you know, are these, you know, uncolonized habitats without competition? In the area, I mean, pretty frequently they would fill up. I think maybe not quickly enough to have no effect. So that's a good question. Good. Other possible examples, exceptions. Okay, fine. But, but I mean, one thing I want to take from this is that, so we're getting this basic idea of how life works. Right, but we have these already these interesting, interesting research questions about, you know, okay, where, where does this violate? Oh, maybe after mass extinction. Let's go test this at that point, see if it still holds. Right, and see how easy it is to get new questions in evolutionary biology. Okay. <coughs> okay. So competition of resources is important from that factor of selection. Is that the only factor? So the classic factors that play a major role in evolution. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. What else? Mm -hmm. Alright, so sexual selection and finding that in general. Right? So it could be that competition for resources, they include mates of resources, but maybe not. Right? But there's only sort of, you know, leads to a different sort of selection than section four to be able to occupy a nest. Right. Good. What else? What kind of selections are out there? If I dropped you, in Antarctica, I dropped you in the Sahara Desert. Right? How would you do? You die. Right? You know, unless you have no class, other humans have resources, then you'd probably die. Right? Why? Right, you're not adapted to that environment. Right? And so you have this, it's not a matter of something, you know, you could know, be by a penguin. Right? It's a matter that you froze to death. Right? And so business selection for dealing with the habitat is also present. Right? Um, <coughs> other things have, have that application for anything like that. Right? Whether it's you know, cacti with their leaves are now shriveled to be thorns. Right? Um, so small leaves produce water loss. Right? Um, to you know, blubber and whales. The main sort of adaptations where you know, this methodology allows you to reproduce the survive. Once you have others that can also do that, and you can compete with them. Right? Initially, you have to be able to just meet that threshold of, of survival. Right? You see, oftentimes, what limits range of things is things like frost and things like that. Right? So, right now in Florida, there are bow constrictors right? that are coming north to get us. We've taken over the Flor Florida, and now they're spreading. Right? But we had a few, we had a very cold winter, and that sort of knocked them back, and so it's, it's slowed down the spread. Right? And so, that wasn't due to competition, it was just due to you know, freezing. And they might behaviorally get the adaptations to, you know, dig deeper burrows or crawl into your you know, crawl space or something, right? and just go to survive. <coughs> but right now, this sort of external suction pressure of just survival is also Okay. Does that mean this is wrong?
Okay. Now, how do you change the wording? Be this way. I think in a roundabout way, you not being adapted to an environment prevents you from getting those resources. And if you're shivering and you're too cold to move, that's like your physiology is not designed to keep the resources in that. So ultimately, that's like what you're doing. So you can't move, you can't play. You can't play for um, Yeah, I mean, one thing I know is that, like, has X language already, so it's in for you. It's important, sure it's important. Is it the most important? No. And so if you're saying it's the most important, then maybe you could argue. Saying it's in important, you can quite agree on that in most cases. It's a new question. And, and you know, if you think about you doing evolutionary biology, right? you would say that you're making a grand idea of how that evolves. You're dealing with head dealing with corner cases is important. And so, <coughs> good. Let me just read this from the competition of a famous section of several kinds of traits. So rapid location, so good information for this thing. Um, interfering with, escaping from, man detected. Right? So what's he saying here? We can talk to, talk to each other, or talk to each other about it. What does this mean? Alright, so what's he saying here? So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So, could you ever evolve to not have a spear? I evolved a spear, could I ever evolve to not have a spear?
you have to so in many cases where you know it's that you need to have this great spirit of putting something that's massive. Right? So. Okay, good. So what does he say about that? Say that there's a sort of bias towards the end of the right? And so over every train of time, you just see a trend in things becoming pointier and bristlier and pointy with rhinos. Right? Um, this is an idea. Yeah. And you can definitely see the compelling and independent sensor systems. We see in like three things like people using like this. Good. Yeah. So it's, you know, you see over every time, and, you know, fish get lateral lines, you get better eyes, and there's lots of trends of getting better sensor systems. Like those kind of examples, right? Like cavefish losing their eyes. What else? Right, just over and then we want to see down there, right? So you know, the advantage of having um, eyes there. Um, us, I mean, we lost a lot of our smell receptors. Um, <coughs> and so it seems like this part is a little fuzzier, right? Because those high sensitive systems are very, very expensive. Right, going into a spike, yeah, that's something. Right? But you know, right now, a third of your time is going to keep in your brain running. So you cut back on, on you know, <laughs> you cut back on your brain activity. Right, you have less low energy for like, running things down or for building up spikes. It's a very expensive computer you have now. So maybe this part is better, better support than this part. So in the result of fail to acquire or retain, so failure is an option, right? And the more you fail, and the closer it is, the greater the chance for evolution to happen. What's he saying there? Right, so that's really severe failure. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's true. Um, so, if they're all this then you would have no selection, right? So, it's like it's somewhat, so basically, it's saying that there's selection. Right? So, we're talking about like the spider example, you know, 10% is a lot of selection. Saying okay, tens of tens of fair amount, fifty percent is a little harder, right? And if it's fifty percent, you know, you miss a meal, you said you die, but you die on that. So you just saying there's this less selection. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Here's a quick clip. You can go I'll show you. It's, cool. um, it's lions trying to attack a uh, uh, warthog, right? And so for lions, they're eating food, but the warthog is fighting for its life. Okay. And <coughs> this is a case where there's strong social pressure on the warthog, but it survives. Right? And so the lions you know, fail in this case. So the warthog, you know, has his cost of failure would be death, their cost of failure is a little hungrier. If they fail enough, they'll die. But it's in one. Okay, trade offs. Okay. Um, trade offs occur most when you have a loose amount of energy. Right. So, you know, I, can, I don't have a ton of money. So I can buy, you know, a cheap car that, you know, has room for six people, or a cheap car that can go off roading. I can't afford a you know, six person car that can go off roading. Right. I don't have energy resources. Money to get both as one vehicle, right? Um, <coughs> and same thing here. If you just have enough energy, you can do spikes or longer legs. You can't, you can't have both. Right? For higher energy, you can have both. Um, <coughs> the issue is the trade offs, right? So sometimes they're just not, not so the trade offs are limited energy budget. Right? Some trade offs are just sort of functional trade offs, right? I can't be fast and have a ton of money. But if 
commerce makes me heavier. So the faster, the faster I want to go, I tend to be lighter. So this trade off. We escape these trade offs and we get more energy. Right? Um, determine the block rate <coughs> and it's getting populations. Then we have more areas or more productivity, um, so forth. Okay? And so, those are like architectural innovations. I talked about how fish have twisted jaws, many fish, right? and how with cichlids, they can actually use their hind jaws something else because they now move the muscle attack and take down more independent control. Versus, you know, correlation, but now they can escape that. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, the thing where you might see these trade offs be broken. This one has fast spikes, really big spikes, and also from our friends. Extinction. I haven't talked about this before. Going to bias and extinction are. Uh, high specialist, specialist, high sort of pyramid, like that, right? um, And so, this is, this is a saying. There should be this sort of trend, quite over time, for being you know faster, more expensive, more defended, and then exogenous periodicity comes and resets it back to lower. Right, was something we talked about. Here is talking about it in terms of context of energy. It is sort of now summarizing the idea. It's a long term trend, but it's competition related characteristics. Right, so here's traits we see evolving, we see an expensive spear development, or confronting rhino development, and more than lock, last, lock, uh, loss of those. Um, <coughs> and extinction resets it. Okay. Now, if you had extinction enough, it reset up and keep, have a, keep a negative trend. Right? He's arguing that extinction is. If you get enough that there's, that there's still this positive trend. Can you test that? Maybe test this again. Yes, so how would you test this idea that um, there's this constant trend of increasing the ability to compete, but then with extensions you knock back down, the net overall trend across life is increasing the Okay. Alright, so if you look before and after mass extinction events, you can see if, as you suggest, the you know, competitiveness drops down after, after the extinction event and then takes up afterwards. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're getting to that, but yes. So if you think that you have, you know, if it's, it's stuff to be able to detect things, maybe it's the amount of space with the eyes. Or if it's defensive stuff, it's none spikes. And actually, we're going to learn later about what those some of those traits are. So let's break here. So why why am I taking so much time? Then? This isn't like a key. Yeah. Like natural selection is more important than this escalation. Thing. This is nice because it helps you develop map evolutionary thinking. So the person developing that is a set of ideas, and what we learn how to do is that we can critically think about how we can test them. Okay, that's what we're doing in this example. Let's pick it up again on Wednesday. Yeah. I don't think I'm understanding like when there's more energy available, why does it matter the amount of energy in the environment? Like your genetics say what you say is so the amount of energy in the environment. So the idea you're getting to, so what matters is energy flux, like how quickly you're burning energy. Mm -hmm. And so if you have more energy in the environment passing through, so it means more energy passing through. And so more energy goes into the world. So what does that have to say? It's like, it's like, it's like, so he thinks that like maintaining them is expensive, so it's too brain. Right? You'd have a certain amount of energy flow through your body to maintain those expensive brain. So, so if you're going to be slightly reduced. Exactly. Anything that mass extinctions are a lot of energy. So it's kind of weird because it's so like energy only matters and limits it, you know, makes that reflection of energy usage. 
50 pop ups. Oh, yeah.